guys, Nachi and Elsie here today and I am back with a video that I know I promised I was supposed to give you guys, but we are gonna jump into it now. Now today's video is actually going to be about some of the common mistakes that a lot of us make when we are in the process of looking for an apartment. I currently live in New York and to be a little bit more precise, I live in Brooklyn, New York, which is currently undergoing the uh, wonderful thing called gentrification. So with all these different things that come into play when it comes to looking for an apartment, I know that it can be a very tedious process and this is why it's important to make sure you guys don't make some of the mistakes that I have made and I'm pretty sure you'll find some that you were about to make as well. So the very first mistake a lot of us make, and this is even before we even think about looking for apartments, is trying to find affordable apartments. We have a website that is called housingconnect.com. This actually is a really cool website because you can find some really like upscale luxury kind of apartments that are available for people who have a certain income. So if you are struggling, if you're coming from college, working two jobs, whatever you know your plight may be, I would definitely get on here and apply for affordable housing. And most of the time when you are looking for affordable housing you don't have to worry about paying all those different things like realtor fees broker fees because it's through the government most of these applications do take a long time it's basically a lottery so if you can start early get all of your documents in order start thinking about what your income is get online apply and who knows by the time you're actually ready financially and mentally to move out you could be called for an apartment now when it comes to credit I would say probably look at this as like your reference as far as getting an apartment that you want realtors will look at your credit to serve as a breakdown on can this person actually afford to live here can they keep up with the rent and make sure that it is on time it is paid in full every single month a lot of the time we end up finding things on our report that we don't even have any knowledge of and you want to make sure you get that squared away because it really can end up screwing you over in the long run so make sure you know what your credit report is and when you feel like you have a decent enough score get out there and start looking for apartments I don't believe it's a good idea to try to get an apartment that you've never seen before because there are just so many factors that you cannot really gaze just from looking at the pictures. When you're looking at a picture, you're basically taking away the rest of your senses and you're also taking away that like intuitive sense of what your gut is telling you. For one, the pictures that you're looking at could be outdated and when you finally do get to the location, they may not really look like the same picture. That's honestly happened to me multiple times and this is just at resorts in itself. Imagine going to a place for seven days, pictures look amazing online and then when you get there, the life fixture in the bathroom is falling apart, there's bugs everywhere, there's mold, there's mildew, it's like oh my god and yes this is a true life story from when I went on a vacation. Now imagine this being your apartment that you just signed for the next two years. You also want to make sure that you are able to smell certain things. Most of these buildings do share with a business on the bottom. I for one can attest to that. I live in an apartment building that we share with a business which is the local pharmacy which isn't too bad when you think about it. But here's a better one. Imagine if you put your check in the mail, already signed the paperwork and mailed it back and when you get to the location you find that you are in a building with a business but it turns out to be a fish market so let's say you found your apartment it's in the great neighborhood you love it it's amazing you got your lease and you're like okay give me my keys time out make sure that you skim through every single page make sure you read every single detail there on that lease because like i said depending on how long you're staying this is where you're going to lay your head for the next six months year two years three years so you really want to make sure that you are content with every piece of aspect in that lease now the next common mistake that a lot of us do tend to make is not taking pictures of what the property looked like before you moved in this is really important because if you do have to give a security deposit which most of the time you will have to. This deposit is usually about the same amount as what you would pay monthly for the rent. And this usually covers any type of damages, whether it be uh, maybe to the walls, to the carpets, if your home does come with carpet, it could be to appliances. And the pictures are gonna serve as good proof for you because at the time when you're moving out, most of the time the landlord will come in, they'll check around the apartment to see what's going on. And let's say if they say, hey, you know, like this floor is really messed up. Uh, you gotta pay for this. You'd be like, uh, sir, I got receipts, okay? <laughs> which one you want to look at and this will actually hold up in the court of law because you'll be able to have that proof that this is exactly how the apartment was as you got it when you moved in now this is actually a tip that i learned from my stepfather and this is making sure to check the neighborhood before you sign your lease 
do a couple of different drive-bys and checks during the day during the night just different hours just to see what it's like I remember I found this beautiful 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 duplex and it was in a really nice neighborhood you know it was kind of suburban and everything and immediately when I got there I realized that there was a family that had like about maybe six children of like all these different ages and they were going crazy. Thank God I was shown this on the first day that I went to actually see the apartment. But the first thing in my mind was like, Chanel, <laughs> you have to film. <laughs> there are a lot of different kids here. You're gonna be parking your car in the front because the garage was in the front of the house. I saw these kids playing basketball. I saw them throwing different things. And obviously the first thing I was like, kids noise my car is gonna get scratched up they have a dog they're all out in the middle of the house like the doors just wide open like it was a party going on so I'm just like Jesus thank you for showing me this just thank you thank you so much now a very 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 common mistake that even myself I had to correct as of last year is moving into an apartment and not getting renters insurance so as it says renting, most likely when you are renting, it's not property that you own. You're just staying there and like you, you know, like with a video or tape or a textbook, you're renting it from the library until you're ready to leave. God forbid something happened, whether it be a fire, whether it be theft, whether it be a flood. If you don't have renter's insurance, everything in your apartment is pretty much your responsibility. I know my management company within my lease, it actually says in big bold letters, you are advised to get renter's insurance. We are not responsible for anything that could happen in your apartment. But it's like every day in the news, I see there's a new fire, there's a new flood, all these hurricanes going on. So you wanna make sure that all of your belongings are going to be safe. So my best friend Deborah actually is the one that put me on to getting renter's insurance. And if you do have a car or a policy with anyone else, most of the times it will be a lot cheaper because let's say if your neighbor upstairs, you know, clogs the toilet and you got a flood, you're gonna be up the creek with no paddle. You saw what I did there? <laughs> I'll be here all week, guys. First thing that you wanna do when you move in is find out who you should call should something happen. Most of the time, apartment buildings will come with the live-in super. That's somebody who is there 24 seven on call in case of an emergency. They'll be able to be wrong. They'll come to your apartment, they'll fix things. Or let's say if you do have another problem where maybe you have to call the rent office, you wanna make sure that you have the number to your management company. I remember there were a lot of different occasions where I wish I wrote down the number. Again, this is a mistake I made. And it really did cost me a lot of time and effort. A little story with me, I ended up mailing out a check to you know my rent office and I noticed that it was going on like the middle of the month and they still have not taken out the money for this check so I'm just like yo like what's going on I need to find out what's going on I was looking through all these different numbers I was googling the name of the website I had no idea I had to text one of my neighbors they were at work I had to wait for them to get back to me long story short I never got the information that I needed so what I had to end up doing is contacting my living super who then gave me the number and then I had to go and call the office and find out what was going on another reason why it's important to have these numbers is because you want to find out who shares the responsibilities in the property that you're living in now these responsibilities could range from a lot of different things depending on the amenities that you have in your location. Most of these things could range from uh, recycling, who does the trash, who does the mowing of the lawn, and of course shoveling. <laughs> I actually rent a garage that's separate from my apartment because this location doesn't come with the garage, but my car is nice so I got to keep it in you know, a cute little garage and I remember it was snowing something crazy like really snowing bad and I went to my garage and I was ready to you know like you know beep beep open the door and I see this giant mound of snow and I'm just like, whoa, 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 what's going on here? Like my driveway isn't shoveled. So, you know, I called my landlord. I'm like, hey, uh, need to get my car out and there's snow all over the place. Who's gonna shovel it? And when I'm on the phone, I hear silence. I'm just like, hey, uh, are you still there? She's like, yeah, uh, you, you know that it's your responsibility to shovel the snow, right? And I was like, oh. <laughs> No, I did not know that. Now we're winding down to the last tips and now we are going to cover roommates. If you are in a situation where you are going into an apartment with roommates, particularly a stranger who you don't know, make sure, please guys, make sure that you take the time to seriously sit down and interview these individuals. You will be living with a stranger for however time that you were locked into this lease. So you need to make sure that you are comfortable around this person. You guys can get along. They're not crazy. I 
can give my testimony here in saying that I have been witness to so many rants from my friends regarding their roommates eating their food, taking their things and not asking for them, leaving the place a complete mess, moving out of the apartment when they've only been three months into their two year lease. Wow, it can't be a quick, you know, hey, hi, what kind of music are you into? No, guys, you really gotta sit down and really ask the important questions. If you wanna go a step further, which I am definitely not against, ask for a couple of references just to see what past people will say about these people. And at the end of the day, you have to trust your gut. Always go with your gut. So guys, we are down to our last tip, and this is the number one mistake that most renters make, and this is not asking questions. If at any point, I don't care how stupid, trivial, or even minute you think a question is, always ask questions. If there is something that you do not understand in your lease, ask questions. If there is something that you want clarification on in the apartment, ask questions questions. If you're unsure and uneasy about something that maybe your landlord is telling you, ask questions. There is nothing worse than moving into an apartment, giving your money away, and settling in into a space where you do not feel comfortable, you feel unsure, or, or having the moment when you realize, I probably just made a big mistake moving here. Go over your lease five times, ask all the different questions that you want, and if you still feel unsure, have your attorney look over it and make sure everything is clean, crisp, and coherent, okay? So that you don't have any regrets, you don't have any fumbles, so you can kind of avoid the whole song and dance of, eh, no, I gave you like my security, the brokers, and the first month's rent. Uh, I made a mistake. Can I kind of get all that money back? So guys, that was pretty much my video on most of the mistakes that a lot of renters have made, including myself. If you guys feel like I may have missed anything or if you do want to add to the conversation, be sure to drop it down below in the comment section. I was going to say description box. I don't know why. If you do enjoy videos like this where I give my inside and background knowledge on different real life events, be sure to let me know by giving this video a thumbs up. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Happy house hunting and apartment hunting. Bye guys.